să ne Peter addressed the people, you Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us as though our own power or piety we had made this man walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our own ancestors has glorified his servant Jesus whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the Holy and Righteous One and asked to have a murderer given to you. And you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses, and by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, who you see know and know, and the faith that is though through Jesus has given him the perfect help, the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, and did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will respond to that reading using the canticle, Christ or Passover instead of the star. It is in the found on page 37 of our prayer books. Together, Christ our Passover has been sacrificed for us. So let us celebrate the feast, not with the old leaven of corruption and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Christ, once raised from the dead, dies no more. Death has no more dominion over him. In dying, he dies to save once for all. In living, he lives to God. See yourselves, therefore, as dead to sin, and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who sleep. For as by man came death, by man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, now, and shall be forever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of John, chapter 3, beginning at verse 1. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us in that is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be 
has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this, when he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The graduate hymn, number 530, Master Speak, thy servant Eric. <laughs> Oh, 
they had seen Jesus risen from the dead, Jesus himself stood among them and said, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their, jo in their joy, they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish. And he took it and ate in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you. That everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms, must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of Christ. Threaten the political system, 
they decided they would, they would kill him. And whenever I think of that story, I recall our own Alexander Bedford, who for many of us was a madman. He had a large following. Hundreds of people. Hundreds of poor people. He gave them dignity and taught them self-worth. He had enterprises that caused poor black people to prosper. And fairly an uprising the authorities in our day, in our age, got rid of him and told the story that he was mad. And just like the crowd who said, crucify him, we bought that story. But Easter and resurrection means that we too must recognize the radical change that is expected of us as Christians. And many of us do not embrace it in its fullness. We do the little that doesn't make us look eccentric or nitpicky, picky, but we do not love with all our hearts. We wrestle with living in the love of Christ. And 1 John 3, verses 1 to 3, from our second lesson, explains further as we seek assurance in how to live in the fullness of God's love. It says, See what love the Father has given us, that we are called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him. For we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purifies, purify themselves just as he is pure. So the passage invites us firstly to see the love. Secondly, to recall that we have some knowledge of the love. And thirdly, as more love is revealed, we purify ourselves in this world. See the The Greek word used for see has the connotation of not only physically see, but also imagining, seeing the mind's eye. Thus conceptualizing what this love could mean for us. The word also implies experiencing the love. To take heed, to care for. And it is also used for showing oneself. With this, these varied understandings of how love is to be experienced, and express. It doesn't take a vivid imagination to determine what is expected of us based on what we already know of God's love. The chorus says, God's love is as wide as an ocean, deep as the deepest sea, high as the heavens above. It is always warm always greater than anything we can conceive or imagine. And Paul tells us in Romans 8 that 
nothing can separate us from God's love. And Ephesians 3 and verse 20 tells us that what God is capable of cannot be measured. As humans, we like to box up things so that we can better understand it. And things we don't understand, we dismiss it on the rubbish then. But friends, God's immeasurable love cannot be rubbish. Very few of us would say that we have never experienced it. And I'm sure that were I to ask for a show of hands, several hands would go up. We experience God's love every day in the ability to function, in relating to others, in the goodness we receive from others, and in the undeserved favors God bestows from us. John says we are children of God. An analogy that makes it easy for us to understand because we all have earthly parents who at one time or another we trust him. Who loved us or who loves us and who cares for us? And yes, there are those of us who don't understand love. But, under, but love is extreme care. Love is where you know that the other person will do anything for you. Where you can trust them. You work hard to keep it alive. That is the relationship. And that is what God does for us. God protects. God guides. God fights to maintain a relationship with us. Every time we make a wrong turn, God shows up and sets us back on the right path. That is God. Always forgiving. Always adjusting to keep the relationship alive and strong. It isn't about being a walk over or do a matter remaining in an abusive relationship. But is a relationship where you are able to forgive and continue. Or maybe even start over with new ground rules. And first Corinthians 13 verses 4 to 7 tells us. What is loving behavior? And I presume that many of us can recite the King James Version that I heard. Love is patient. Love never gives up on the other party. Love is kind, that is, it cares more for others than for self. Love isn't envious, it doesn't want what it doesn't have. Love doesn't have a swell head. It doesn't boast or brag. It's not arrogant. It's never rude, crude, or indecent. Love isn't easily upset. Love doesn't tie wrongs. Nor is love glad when bad things happen. Love rolls with the punches. From what may sickness and health for our rich, we remain faithful friends to each other. Love hopes for the best. Love never dies. And if this is our yardstick by which we measure love, then we have some knowledge of what God's love in its fullness is supposed to be. And each of us is challenged to love like this without judgment 
and helping others find their own way to live God's God. The passage says, We know more about God as God has revealed God's self to us. And John says, It is revealed as we purify ourselves in this love. Purifying oneself may imply keeping yourself pure, which in turn suggests not participating in any activity that may defy you or may make you impure. But if we look at the Old Testament references to purifying, it is about refining and getting better. It's about going through the fire, removing the impediments, the dross, the bad things, the things that doesn't make for good, nor the sea, and also the things that do not build up the common life. It is facing temptations and being able to say, get behind me, Satan, I have no part or not to do to me. It is not emphasizing the shame of an act, but emphasizing the forgiveness, the redemption, and the journey back to holiness. And a good example is what we deal with teenage pregnancy. You know that disease that we don't want any of our daughters to catch. Yet it happens. And what do we do? We shame them. And if you think about it, very often it's not the promiscuous child who gets caught. But the one who has been sheltered and unexposed. And those of us who had the same fate, we are even harder than the others. And so instead of running around these girls, giving them enough grace that they can rebound, we treat them like the scum of the earth. And truth be told, one of their sins may just be being foolish enough to be called. And many times the sin is on us as adults because we have failed to make sure they understand about the birds and the bees. The love we have been speaking about says we open our arms to the sinner and help make them whole again. And I know we are uncomfortable with that particular three little word. But in our sexualized society, it's not something we should be squeamish about, but something we should be pulling our society away from to some level of decorum and decency, particularly in dress and behavior. And that can only be done by speaking about it. Going through the painful fire of refining our thinking and that of our society. We purify ourselves as He is pure, verse 3 tells us. And Christ represents what it means to be truly pure. For us, purity is a process of becoming like Christ. It is the striving, the wrestling, the intentionality to love as Jesus loved. To have as much grace with ourselves as God bestows on us. 
to love ourselves as Christ loves us. To cut ourselves some slack even while we are removing the impurities. And friends, we know this love. We have experienced it more than once in our lives. We may be thought that this goodness was not ours, that it was an accident, a fluke. But in that accident or a fluke, it was God showing you the better way. And all you have to do is to live it. Appreciate it. See it for what it is. God's amazing grace and unconditional love. Unearned and undeserved. We have a debt of gratitude which we can only repay by loving others as God has loved us. May we choose to accept the invitation of 1 John 3. To see more of the love. May we reflect and recall what we understand about God's love and then refine ourselves in that love. So we are then able to pass on this grace, this love as we grow in it. May we choose to be intentional in becoming more Christ like. Amen. No. Thank 
places of safety, less fortunate and those living on our streets. Persons diagnosed with blood and lung disorder, shingles, gallstones, heart and kidney failure, broken limbs, mental health issue, issues, stress and depression, all pregnant and nursing mothers, our children and young people, the abused, the aging and with those with chronic pain, especially Millicent Ewart, Lloyd Hanson, Marva Dunkley, Bridget Gordon, Elva Thomas. For our homebound members, especially Ina and Rudolph Active, Adassa Nemard, Daphne Holmes, Ida Hayden, Mildred Moore, Joyce Lodge, Velma Thomas, Myrtle Johnson, Dorothy Brown, Lucille McQueen, Match Allain, Hyacinth McIntosh, Gloria Palmer, and Conroy South. We remember those whose earthly lives are drawing to a close, that they may know the healing presence and peace of Christ alongside them. We also remember at this time, Annie Brown, who has died within the last, the past week. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for ourselves, our neighbors, our colleagues, families and friends, that we may see the risen Christ in them and that they might see him in us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we offer these prayers to you, trusting that you hear us and answer us in your love and compassion. We pray that your will may be done in our lives and in the lives of all those for whom we pray and that you will show us what we need to do to bring your kingdom into our world. Amen. Amen. Thank you. 
the oath of the king. Thank you.
Let us offer back to God from what He has given. Father, we offer you these gifts which you have given us, this bread, this fat, and this money. With them we offer ourselves, our lives, and our work to the cause through our Holy Spirit and reason of our holy and divine sacrifice. As this bread and bread become the body and blood of Christ, so may we and all our people become channels of their love. For the same Christ, O oh Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to live and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks, Father Almighty, everlasting God. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true pastor Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death. And by his rising to life again, has won for us eternal life. Therefore, we praise you. Join in our voices with angels and dark angels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this name, to glorify your name. And when he had given thanks, he gave to them and said, 
really this is all about me. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it for the remembrance.
we pray for this prayer to shout in the body of Christ. Okay. Okay.
taste and see the goodness of the Lord.
number 618, sent forth by God's blessing or true faith confessing. Brothers and sisters in Christ, 